Hi guys, it's Phil from 15 Minute Guitar Practice. Now, if you want to make your bluesy stuff sound a little more jazzy, then this is the video for you. Because um, there's nothing worse. If you go to a blues jam, uh, then there's a guitarist over there and a guitarist over here, and they're both playing exactly the same rhythm and exactly the same chords. It's kind of dull. So here are a few things we can do to jazz up your blues playing. And um, let's start with, with tone, okay? Here's my stratty tone we've got. Kind of plinky. Okay, so let's do a quick and dirty jazz tone. Let's roll this tone right down. And that was on the, the middle pickup. So let's roll this across to the neck pickup. Instant jazz tone. So let's use that tone, okay? Less bite, more rounded. That works nicely if you've got a strat. Um, if you've got a Les Paul or something, then you're obviously sorted because you've got a, a humbucker, more rounded sound. Uh, just roll the tone off a little bit and um, you should be sweet. So, now I'm gonna take a, a regular one, four, five progression. A typical blues, we're gonna do it in G. So my chords would be a G7. For our one chord, a C7, for our four chord, and a D7, for our five chord. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do to make this progression a little more jazzy, it's not much, but you'll see where I'm going with this in a sec, is to move this G7, which is a root six, uh, root six fingering, Moving it up to the 10th fret, make it a root 5 fingering. So the root starts at the 10th fret, and it sounds like this. And that will be 10, 12, 10, 12, and 10. That's the, what I'd say, more traditional fingering of a 7th chord. Um, but we're going to use a different one, an alternative one. Obviously there's, there's lots of different ways you can voice a chord. I'm going to use this one here. Same chord, so it's still a G7, still the same as that. Sounds a little bit different. And that one is 10, 9, 10, 8. Okay, the difference is just the order of the intervals. Here, with the kind of traditional fingering, we've got the root, the fifth, the minor seven, then the major third. And then top one is the root again. With the other one, you've got the root, the major third, the flat seven, and then an octave of the root. So that voicing there doesn't actually have a fifth in it, um, which is fine. Fifth is kind of it kind of fills out the sound, but doesn't actually add any melodic color. So there's quite a lot of instances where fifths are omitted. Now if you don't know what I mean by the, the minor third, the flat seven, any of that, um, these are the intervals that make up the chord and if you're not familiar with the intervals there is a, a door that's waiting to be opened. So if you want to know more about intervals please check out my ear training boot camp for guitarists and get yourself sorted because it uh, really makes a huge difference to understanding things. I'll put a link in the bottom. But anyway back to this. So our G7 is now this voicing at the 10th fret. And we're going to play a C7 at the 8th fret, okay? And this is a root 6 version, whereas before it was a root 5 version. So we're up here, 8, 10, 8, 9, 11, and 8. Now, what we're going to do with this one is just move this pinky, which is playing that note, we're going to move it down one fret, so it's on the 10th fret, tucked in and underneath my third finger. Okay, sounds like that. That is a 13th chord. And that note 
it's your thirteenth note. If you count up the major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay. Now I'm not going to play it like that, but you can do. I'm just going to adjust the fingering slightly and leave out a couple of notes. So I'm going to play it like this. It's more of a jazz fingering. It's typical to have like a root note and then maybe three of the of the upper notes. Okay, so this is now our fingering for our four chord, and this is our fingering for our one chord. So what we are now going to do is just notice the top notes of each of those chords. This one, top note is that, and our new thirteenth chord, the top note is that, and what we're going to do is put something in between those two. Okay, you'll notice that that note and that note are two frets apart, so we've got an opportunity to put something in the middle there, and that's what we're going to do. Now, I know you're already saying, but Phil, that sounds horrible. Well, it was jazz, <laughs> and we're only going to be dealing with that note briefly. Okay, passing in passing, so it might sound horrible on its own but when you see it and hear it in context, it will make more sense. So what we're gonna do, it's gonna go from our G7 chord there, then we are going to adjust our G7 fingering to include that note. So we're gonna move the top note from there to there. So we're gonna go from there to there, and then resolve to there, okay? So that's our G7 fingering for the extra note is the same fingering apart from the, the top note, it's moved up a fret. So I'm playing it 10, 9, 10, 9. I'm doing a bar and then putting my second and my third finger down on the A string and the G string. So we'll play it like... You could, when you change to the four chord, do the same on the way down by moving this top note just down. So you could go. Before you go back to your G7. Now, like I said, the one chord, our fingering of this, didn't have the fifth. But the fifth is actually just on the sixth string here. So instead of playing that, could actually play the same chord and that would still be valid as a chord. It would just be um, a little more colourful. Okay, so from there, if that's, your, if that's your one chord, remember we're going from here and our four chord is here, starting here. Again, there's a distance of two frets, so we can um, exploit that and put something in there. So we could go from there, playing that. Okay, so that middle chord from here, which is 10 on the E, nothing on the A, and then 9 on the D, 10 on the G, and 8 on the B. We'll go from there, and we're swapping these two fingers over. Um, this one is coming up and going on to the ninth fret. And that one is going underneath it, the ninth fret. So that's nine on the E, nothing on the A, nine on the D, ten on the G, and eight on the B. Down to our C13. So there's a couple of ideas for you just to fill in some of the blank. What we're doing is basically playing a small melody that's ascending or descending. Um, in a chromatic way, moving up by one fret at a time. To, to join up, make that transition instead of going one, four, there's one, and something else, and there four. Um, one more thing you can do to jazz up, this is more to do with your lead play. You know, you hear a, a blues player bending 
will be a, an absolute fundament of blues lead play, you know. You'll hear, uh, you know. Um, but you hear a, a jazz, jazz guitar. No bending there. Now, I know there is bending in jazz, but if you want to sound more jazzy, you want to do more slurring, more slides. So in our, in our G... Slide in from one fret below. And that just helps give it that jazzier feel without really you doing anything different with, with notes you're playing, just with how you're playing those notes. So there's a couple of tips for making your blues playing a little more jazzy sounding. I hope that's been useful. Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Cheers for now.